guys my name is dr keerthi and today we are going to discuss about how to approach your residency so this is an exclusive video only for the first year post graduate students who just joined the md pathology and i know even as a first year post graduate i was so confused it took me literally almost 8 months to figure out how to approach and how to start which book to read so it took me almost 8 months to figure it out so let's make simple for you guys okay so first we will discuss about the uh, university scheme so i am from karnataka so i'll be telling you about my university that is rajiv gandhi university of health sciences where you will have a 700 marks exam in that 400 will be your theory which you have a four papers each paper is 100 marks so you will have theory for 400 marks and then comes your practical exam which is of 300 marks in that 200 is for your practical and 100 is for your viva voice okay so this this are the 700 marks you have be giving a exam after your 3 years so what you are supposed to do in your first year so first year uh, at the end of first year you are supposed to uh, clear your bcbr exam that is a basic course in biomedical research so which you have to clear by the end of your first year that is one point and uh, joining uh, within the 6 months you should finalize your thesis topic so how to search for a thesis topic remember the thesis topic you should go to your university website and see uh, in the pathology specialty see the topics the topic shouldn't be uh, repeated within the 3 to 5 years span at least 3 years make sure the topic is not repeated okay these two things you should be done at the end of your first year then what you are supposed to do in your second year second year you are supposed to present a oral paper and poster presentation and thesis work anyways you will start from the first year but at the end of your second year you should start working on your thesis okay so this was about the things now coming to studies how to study and what are the books to refer what is the ideal way to study and so many people tells ma'am it's so tiring that by the time i come to my room it will be 9 o'clock in the evening or night i don't have any stamina to study so my personal advice is even i used to feel the same so what i used to do is have a dinner and sleep well take rest because health is more important right so but wake up early in the morning like 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock because if you sleep at 9 you can wake up at 4 then again you have to go back to your uh, college at 8 only right so ideally you will get some 4 hours extra so use those early morning times to study okay and even the research tells you know we call it brahma muhurtam so it has a uh, effect on you i know it's a tough but if you want to do it definitely you going to do it please try this okay so that's what so you sleep early as soon as you come from a college because you will be tired there is no point in reading nothing goes in your head so just have food and talk to your parents your friends then just take rest then get up early morning at 4 o'clock or at least by 5 and try to read at least 1 hour per day because there are two types of preparation for your md pathology okay please understand this this is not a ug course this is a pg course so whatever training you get through this 3 years is what remains with you this is what you going to practice once you finish your md path and this is what will be stay uh, till you till you die because now you are a pathologist right nothing can change it so so please give your 100% during this 3 years and try to learn as much as you can from your staff or your consultants or from your seniors even the technicians will teach you so many things because why i am telling there are certain things which are not given in our textbooks so that only comes with an experience so you can get that only from your consultant seniors or even technicians they would have perfectized some art few people will be expert in staining so you can learn from them right so take it as an opportunity and daily make sure you are going with the mindset that today i will learn something new at the end of the each day ask yourself did i make it worth today did i learn anything new so keep questioning yourself and definitely you're going to grow over this 3 years and one more thing is there are two types of studying one which you study from the day one of your course 
so you can study completely and you can uh, gain the knowledge and you can read slowly each topic and you can give a proper time to the each topic so you can understand the basics well if you start from the first day of your residency and the second way of uh, residency is at the end of your final year that six months to exams you just want to pass your exam remember it's not about passing the exam anyways you will pass it's about what you're going to do after you passing out your exam you will be a consultant you will be signing out a report and you will be responsible for a patient and you will be dictating the line of treatment to a clinician right so there is lots of things uh, you are responsible for so that's why i am telling rather than repenting after finishing your md exams so from the starting or the day one of your residency read a daily a one hour which will have a huge impact over the end of your three years right rather than at the end of your second year or third years uh, last six months you are reading it's i don't think so but people does why because they are not guided properly because they don't know what to start from the first year so they are clueless that's what i'm not telling they are lazy people they have worked enough but nobody have told them how to start from the day one that's what as a pg i personally face so that's why i'm making this video to make you aware how to start so that if you start early the effort it will take is less right daily one hour is enough and the amount of knowledge or the understanding of the concepts you will get will be very great at the end of the uh, second year or when you are near your exams you will be pretty confident you will be doing some third or fourth revision right so that's what matters so all it's about when you are starting your preparation right so start it early so let's start how to start our preparation so rule number 1 always keep a notebook for each posting separately i have seen everybody writes in one book and it nobody knows what is there so there is no point of then making a notes right so keep buy one 200 pages a uh, long white notebook one you keep for your hematology posting one you keep for your histopathology posting and one you keep for your cytology posting so all these three years whenever you are posted you just write on that book so at end of the three years when you want to revise anything everything will be in that book only right so that's it so we will decult how uh, you should approach in the each post each posting like first example i am posted this is my first posting i am a first year resident so i am posted in a hematology for two months so what are i am supposed to do in my first posting so first learn what are the types of anticoagulants and what are the different types of vacutainer we use the colors of the test tubes or the tubes we use right that is called as vacutainers and what type of the anticoagulant is used in them how the sample is processed what is the principle of the coulter what a company we are using how it works what is its principle what is the flagging and when they make a peripheral smear and how to interpret that histograms so there is a book called as abc of cbc you can refer that book it's a given very good for this then uh, one week you try to make smears first learn how to make a smear then next try to learn how to stain it then next month ask your senior how to approach a peripheral smear okay first i am supposed to see in a scanner so what all things i can see in the scanner then see in the 10x 20x and oil immersion then try to see the peripheral smear for one week or 15 days right then the next week uh, start focusing on the bone marrow aspiration go with the senior see observe the procedure how they are doing then ask them to give a chance then see or make the smears of bone marrow aspirate and try to stain it and see what all the side readings it is reported adequacy cellularity ms to e ratio dc all that thing so you keep a target for yourself on a weekly basis like this week i am going to uh, uh, finish smear making and staining next week i am going to uh, learn how to report a peripheral smear next week i am going to see a coulter how it works and how to interpret a histograms and you can ask your seniors for help and refer the textbooks and even ask your consultant if you have any doubts then next week i am going to read about the bone marrow aspiration procedure indications contraindications and how to report it so daily keep on seeing the slides okay so this should be your goal for the first posting in hematology and simultaneously i don't know daily wake up at 1 hour and read you should read a uh, start reading the theory part of it also like this is my first posting i am planning to finish anemias 
so just finish uh, different types of anemias like iron deficiency anemias megaloblastic anemias and all so what are the textbooks you have to refer is mckenzie because you are in the first year this is the time to read for the knowledge to read to clear your basics right for you passing a exam is a far more question it's a, not a thing for you right you are a first year so focus on gaining the skills and the basics and the knowledge so uh, take a textbook mckenzie it's available in pdf also in pathology library uh, telegram you can go and download it or you can buy the new pic it's up to you then uh, for all uh, neoplastic lesions follow who then coming to the uh, practical part you refer daisy and louis for the practical part of hematology or clinical uh, pathology by uh, textbook by your cathologer and the standard books will be avintropes williams and henry so this was about the hematology postings now let's see if you are posted in a cytology posting so what you going to approach so see first what are the different types of uh, samples you receive in your cytology like a uh, fluid you receive exfoliative cytology like cervical uh, cytology that is a pap smear right or you are receiving an fnac so for that techniques and all cost textbook is very nice okay so you can refer the cost textbook uh, for this different techniques what is the cell block how they do it how they process and uh, how the fnac is done the technique and what are the staining principles what different stains we use in cytology how you process a fluid right the pleural effusion acidic a uh, fluid how we process them how we make the slides and how we stain it and how we report it so in the first posting first make sure about the techniques how you do it refer a cause oral or sebas anything is fine then keep a target of 15 days i will finish the cervical cytology for that we refer a bethesda uh, cervical cytology book that is also available in pdf okay so you finish off the cervical cytology be perfect in it and how to report a fluids like csf fluid how to do a cell count how to do a cell typing you ask your seniors okay then uh, go for the fnacs fnacs uh, try co uh, accompany with your seniors learn how they are doing learn the technique how it is done what are the indications contra indications what are the different types of needles gauge we use for the different organs to do an fnac and uh, uh, ask your senior to give you a chance or if you are very anxious person to do it on a patient before practice on a potato or a tomato and practice with that a uh, few people will have uh, anxiety so it's help you do that so practice it and accompany your seniors and learn from it and try to do it okay then stain yourself all the slides then start learning the fnac so the textbooks you can refer is orals oral uh, uh, textbook of cytology or sebas the standard one is cos for cervical cytology you have to refer bethesda okay that is about your cytology and always i told you that you have to keep one notebook for your postings so whatever you are seeing you have to write it in your notebook and try to write the description even you are wrong it's okay okay just practice how to write okay so daily see the slides and see how your senior is writing ask if you don't know anything please ask it's okay nobody going to judge you right if you don't ask now after 3 years when you pass out you can't even ask right so now you can ask everything to anyone there is no shame go and ask the technician and see how he is doing the technique how he is making uh, the smears how he is staining and learn do it by yourself right at the end of the day you will be very happy okay that's it and one more thing you keep one more textbook for your uh, not textbook one more notebook for your uh, theory part like today i saw an fnac of thyroid it was reported as papillary carcinoma right so today i'll sleep and tomorrow early morning i'll wake up so i'll open my fnac textbook either oral sebas or whatever i'm comfortable i'm going to read about thyroid fnac so what are the indications contra indications of thyroid fnac what gauze uh, needle uh, we use uh, to do the fnac and what is the adequacy criteria for thyroid also we use a bethesda system right so i'll go through it what is called adequacy and what are the features of papillary carcinoma of thyroid and what are the differential diagnosis so i go back and i'll have a one more notebook called as my theory notebook where i'm going to write everything about it right and retrospectively also you should collect the question bank of your university so that when you are reading a particular chapter you know where to give a maximum importance 
like as i told you in hematology i am reading a megaloblastic anemia let's take so in my previous university exam they asked about uh, write a note on vitamin b12 essay which may not be a direct question so i have to refer certain articles and make a notes so simultaneously you make off like few questions will be directly there in your textbook so you can uh, read from that few topics will not be there they are related to the topics only some two lines or three lines would be given in your textbook that may not be enough to write for a 10 markers or a 15 markers right so that time only you can make a notes in your notebook so why i am making you to keep a separate separate notebooks is at the end of the three years or before your final exams everything will be there in your book if you write in a papers here and there and if you club in the one book it will be very hard for you to revise in the last six months during your exams okay so that's the thing now we'll go back to our histology uh, sorry histopathology if you are posted in histopath postings how you should approach so you will be posted for one or two months so first month or first one week try to brush up all your histology basic histology which you have read in your mbbs first year okay after that uh, you go uh, go and finish your histotechnics for histotechnics you can uh, read uh, ramdas naik and the standard book is bancroft you can refer that that is available in pdf okay and then the best investment you can do in your pg life is buy an ipad or some tab where you can carry all these books in a pdf form okay so nowadays people are not even buying the notebooks they are writing in that uh, note only you come you will have that google note right uh, so they are writing in that note only so everything will be in your tab only right so that is one thing you can do the best investment you can have and next for histology you can refer whatever the book you read in your mbbs or uh, you can uh, go for the vetus uh, histology that is a basic book uh, it costs 700 to 900 rupees or you can refer a uh, miller's histology for pathologists it's a little standard book and higher book you can have the pdf of it the next uh, i told you histotechnics you can see ramdas naik that is also 900 to 1000 rupees our uh, standard book is bancroft so what i did is whatever the indian authors are there i used to buy and whatever the standard books are there i used to keep a pdf in my tab or in my phone so it's a handy like all the who classification of books i had a pdf whereas i bought uh, ackerman or sternberg so which is a one book you have to read through and through anyways you gonna buy a robins that is for sure right so in histopath first you finish uh, in first one week or 10 days your histology part then you finish your histotechnics so what is this histotechnics is uh, basically how you receive a sample in a histopath lab and how you going to uh, fix it how you going to process it how you going to stain it and how you going to make a slide so it tells you about what all the procedures it goes through okay so that you can finish and later on you start seeing the slides daily like today i read a histology of endometrium so go today uh, see the slide of endometrium and try to identify whether it's in a proliferative phase or secretive phase try to write the description and ask your senior how they are writing whether you are correct once your consultant reports it go back and cross check yourself where did you go wrong what did you miss ask your senior to show it okay so daily keep on uh, reading one histology and try to see the like like today i crossed uh, your senior has crossed some thyroid sample so you go back today and read the histology of thyroid gland tomorrow come back and see it. how the thyroid follicles look what the normal looks how the goiter looks what the papillary carcinoma of thyroid looks so go back and read and try to write the description so keep on doing that okay so this was about the histopath so first finish it off histology then go for histotechnics then you have to buy a textbook either it's ackerman or sternberg so go back go to your library and read it whatever you are comfortable you buy that book and for neoplastic lesions you have to refer who so that's it about the video hope you liked it please share it so this is how you should approach to your uh, first year pathology residents this is my personal opinion but it's up to you uh, whatever you feel comfortable you can follow it hope all the best for your pathology residency i want all of you to come out with the flying colors with the concepts basics and knowledge at the end of your 3 years okay so all the best and have a good day